Hello everyone and welcome to Survivor Chat, the show where I, it's a loose concept. I'm just gonna be drinking and talking about Survivor. For those of you who wanna know what I'm drinking throughout this episode, I have a nice strawberry cider, crisp, chilled, and I've added a shot of vodka. Mm. For those of you who don't know, Survivor is about to start its 40th season. Survivor Winners at War, which is a season full of 20 returning winners. I have been waiting for a season like this since, oh my God, I think since All Stars, I wanna say. <sighs> so for those of you who are brand new to Survivor and have no idea what the show is about, welcome. We are glad to welcome you. We are happy you're here. Survivor was a groundbreaking show that started in 2000 that took 16 Americans, separated them into two tribes of eight where they were stranded on a desert island and the two tribes competed for rewards and immunity. The tribe that lost immunity had to go to tribal council and vote out one person from their tribe. And this pattern continued every three days until there was a certain amount of people left, in which case the two tribes merged into one tribe and then they all went to tribal council to vote someone out until there were two left at which point the jury, which were the last nine people who were voted out of the game, came back and voted for the final two, which one of them they wanted to be a winner. Did I explain that properly? I don't know. In the beginning, Survivor was mostly just about surviving. Like the elements, they had a lot of like people trying to build shelter and trying to find food and trying to like figure out how to live on this deserted island because that was pretty much the draw of the show. Recently, it's shifted, so it's not necessarily about the country anymore or like the environment, but it's about the game and the twist that they bring to the game. But suffice it to say, over the 20 years, Survivor has evolved from a game that's strictly about survival to a game that's all about social politics. And it's just fascinating. Survivor Winners at War is bringing back 20 returning winners. And I am so excited for this cast. I think this is such a great, great cast. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go tribe by tribe. I'm just gonna tell you my favorites and then we can just like carry the conversation wherever it goes once the episodes start airing. Sound good? I'm like so excited, I just need to take a breath. In the red tribe, the Dakal, the Dakal tribe. Fuck, how do you say that? Dakal, 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 Dakal. Dakal, in the Dakal tribe, we have Tyson Apostle, who is the winner of Survivor Blood vs. Water. Sophie Clark, the winner of Survivor South Pacific. Sandra Diaz Twine, the only two-time winner in Survivor history. She won Survivor Pearl Island season seven and Survivor Heroes vs. Villains season 20. We have Wendell Holland, who won Survivor Ghost Island. Yule Kwan, who won Survivor Cook Islands. Sarah Lucina, who won Survivor Game Changers. Amber Mariano, who won Survivor All-Stars. Kim Spradlin, who won Survivor One World. Tony Vlacos, who won Survivor Kageon. And Nick Wilson, who won Survivor David vs. Goliath. In blue, part of the Sele tribe are Natalie Anderson, winner of Survivor San Juan del Sur. Danny Boatwright, winner of Survivor Guatemala. Jeremy Collins, winner of Survivor Cambodia Second Chances. Ben Dri Ben Dribur Ben Ben Dribergen Ben Dribergen, winner of Survivor Heroes vs. Hip. Jesus Christ, this guy is full of tongue twisters. Ben Dribergen, winner of Survivor Heroes vs. Healers vs. Hustlers. Uh, Michelle Fitzgerald, winner of Survivor Co Wrong. Adam Klein, winner of Survivor Millennials vs. Gen X. Shout out to the Bay Area boy. Rob Mariano, Boston Rob, winner of Survivor Redemption Island. Parvati Shallow, winner of Survivor Micronesia, fans vs. favorites. Denise Stapley, winner of Survivor Philippines. And Ethan Zahn, winner of Survivor Africa. <coughs> We're gonna start with the Dakal tribe. This beautiful red buff that I have on my head here is what the Dakal tribe is going to be wearing. They're gonna be the tribe in red. My favorites, I have seven favorites from the Dakal tribe. Tyson, Sandra, Wendell, Yule, Sarah, Amber, and Kim. Those are my faves. If, I, if any of those make it far and win, I'm happy. But the three that I'm gonna talk about, Sandra, Yule, 
and Amber. Sandra Diaz Twine. Sandra is the only two-time winner in Survivor history. She was on Survivor Pearl Island season seven and she won. She came back for season 20, Survivor Heroes vs. Villains, and she won. And then she came back for Survivor Game Changers, and she obviously was voted out. She is the best player on Survivor, and I feel like that is without question. <laughs> Sandra being the best player in Survivor history, I feel is undisputed. No one can argue that because she's the only person to win twice. That's not an accident. That's not luck. That's just how she plays the game. The first time she played the game in the Pearl Islands, she was underestimated. She was someone who wasn't really looked at as a threat. A lot of the bigger threats really were butting heads with each other. And Sandra was just kind of laying low, pulling information. She She's very good at sneaking around and getting information and intel from other conversations that she's not part of. And she's also just so sharp at reading people. Sandra has probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest target on her back this season because no one wants to see her win a third time. So it's gonna be very interesting to see how Sandra approaches this this season because she she's great. She is a great player. She knows how to talk to people. She knows how to get information. She knows how to appeal to people's strengths. She knows how to, you know, find their weaknesses and play to that. So it's gonna be interesting to see how she adapts her game this time to see how far she can get. I don't know if she's gonna make it very far and I definitely don't think that she's gonna win. Sandra will always be the first person to win Survivor twice and when she won a second time, she wasn't playing in a season of all winners. So it wasn't one of those things. Like in this season, it's pretty much guaranteed that someone is gonna be a two-time winner because they have already won before and it's all winners. So there's, it's it's basically like a, another two-time winner is being handed on a silver platter, whereas that wasn't the case for Sandra. Sandra was on a season the second time with people who haven't won before, and she still won a second time. So Sandra will always be the greatest player of all time, in my opinion. Ah, oh, my God. So it's gonna be interesting to see how, what she does. That's, 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 that's my Sandra talk. Next up, Yule. This will be Yule's second time playing Survivor. The last time he played was way back in season 13 for Survivor Cook Islands. That was an interesting season because- Controversial. In Cook Islands, they had four tribes at the beginning. There was the white tribe. There was the African-American tribe, the Latinx tribe, and the Asian American tribe. And that was, very interesting choice. Yule has said in his pre-game interviews for Winners at War that when he played Cook Islands, he felt some pressure to play the game a certain way and to be perceived a certain way because of the racial divisions, because he felt like he needed to be an example for Asian Americans. So it's gonna be interesting to see now how Yule plays the game without the pressure of having to be a good Asian American role model. Not only that, but Yule is hot. He is definitely one of my big survivor crushes. Yule is very, very smart, and he is a very, very social player. And I feel like there are a lot of bigger targets this season, and a lot of people may not look at Yule as an important threat to get out right away. So I feel if Yule can just kind of lay low for a little bit, people are gonna go towards the bigger targets and I feel like he can get a little bit of momentum and build an alliance to the point where he can ride that to the end. So I feel like Yule has a good shot of winning the game or getting far, I hope. So I'm hoping for Yule, yay. And then lastly on the Decal tribe that I'm gonna talk about, Amber Mariano. This will be her third time playing the game. The first time was all the way back in season two for Survivor the Australian Outback. And then she played again in season eight for Survivor All-Stars where she won. Amber played on Survivor All-Stars and she met her uh, now husband, Boston Rob. They made an alliance. They were in that alliance the entire game. They dominated the game basically. They made it to the final two at the finale. Boston Rob proposed to Amber and then the vote came out, Amber won. The thing about Amber is that with being in an alliance with Boston Rob, Boston Rob in All-Stars was so aggressive and he was so like 
cutthroat. Like he made alliances, stabbed people in the back the next day. And Amber got a reputation for hiding behind him and not being as big of a strategic mastermind as she actually is. In the end, I feel like the hate towards Boston Rob kind of dampened Amber's win a little bit, even though I'm sure Amber doesn't feel this way at all. But people really credit like Amber's win to people voting against Rob instead of voting for Amber. So I'm very excited to see her come back. I've wanted Amber to come back and play Survivor ever since All Stars um, because I just felt like she needs another chance to prove to everyone that she's worthy of winning. I mean, obviously she won All Stars, so she's worthy, but I feel like people don't give her enough credit. And I feel like a lot of people are probably gonna be underestimating her in this game. I hope so because People are gonna be saying, you know, obviously Boston Rob and Amber are not starting on the same tribe. So it's gonna be interesting to see how Amber maneuvers that. She still has a huge target on her back because she's out here with Boston Rob. What Amber needs to do is hit the beach and then go looking for an idol, go looking for a clue, go looking for advantage. Because if she finds that and she can leverage some alliance in the beginning, so I'm I'm really, really hoping for Amber to get as far as she can go in this game. If I may be so bold, I would love to see Amber win this game. I That's mostly just my nostalgia, like old school connection to the game. I wanna see an old school person win this game. I don't know, I don't think Amber is going to win this game realistically. I don't think she's gonna get very far, but I'm hoping that she does. I'm really, really hoping that she does. Oh my God, this is so stressful.